Hello everybody and a very warm welcome back to Tiny Northeastern and another mini adventure um, <laughs> regarding this layout. Um, last week we looked into the performance of the G5 in trying to create a scene um, that I was always um, intending to do and I think I got it as good as it well, as I could do, really, um, regarding what was seen in the photographs. And, uh, yeah, Stevenson's Bank has always been um, a testing platform for any new locos um, that arrives at the North Eastern, um, just to see what they can achieve and, and their performance so that um, I know exactly um, in future running session how many coaches to put behind the loco and little things like that um, just to well to see if they can actually reach the South Shield station which is over there in the background Right, so moving on from that episode, we're back at Jarrah Road, and um, I think it's about time I made the signal box. That SB needs to be covered over. Right, so I've got an idea of how I want the signal box to look, and I want to make it in the same style of this stonework, so that when I do run in sessions that the two buildings blend in together if that makes sense so this signal box is, not, is gonna be uh, off the cuff as it were so there's no um, photographs to copy off or anything like that it's just gonna be simply made and then just plonked on the layout. So I'm just checking out the space that I've got here. It's, it's not a lot. Uh, as you can see, I've got roughly, if I go to the, if I leave a little bit of space there, up to the ballast edge, it's 60 millimeters. And if we go this way, um, place the rule that way, I'm looking at roughly about. 94 millimeters so that would be the base size and I, I've got a little bit there to play with with the roof overhanging and things like that so I will draw it out and um, and I'll also cut a piece of card out at that size and put it there just to see um, basically if that space is going to work for that size, if not I can reduce it a little bit. So it'll be interesting to see what this looks like <laughs> when it's finished. So. so here we are, we're back at the bench. Well, I've been at the bench for about an hour or so, um, putting together this little sketch. Um, yeah, so I've gone through some photographs um, just to try and get an idea of how I'm going to do this and the materials um, that I'm going to use but as I mentioned before I'm using the same materials that's on the water tower well the water tower was a kit um, so I'd like to keep the two buildings similar in masonry if, if that makes sense so here we are this is what uh, I've got planned It's quite small signal box and I'm looking at it, 82 mil wide by 58 mil uh, deep up to that point then we had the chimney on which is going to be about 6 mil um, wide 8 mil at the top so obviously it's got to overhang the reason why I've done that is with previous bills the cables always come up through the chimney then go into the roof um, yes um, this signal box um, I'm having keeping the ends of the roof um, straight um, 
is to try and keep it simple. 60% um, of the signal boxes on the northeast had the, the sloping roofs which come across like that. Uh, but I have found quite a few signal boxes which have the straight roofs from front to back as we see in this photograph here. But this is a purely a wooden structure. Um, but I'm using this uh, as, as a, an example. Um, I have found other ones. I just find the page. Yes, yeah, so this is the idea that I had in mind, something similar to this, where you've got uh, a brick um, signal box with a wooden top with the sloping roof front to back. Um, this one's um, a beamish. I don't know if they have that exact um, signal box now. Um, but yeah, that's the idea I'm, I'm looking for. Before I do any scratch building, I always make sure I have the doors and the windows done first. Um, that's a, a Will's kit windows along with these doors. Um, you've seen me use these doors before. Um, they're all over on my layout. Um, <laughs> virtually every building's got this type of door. Sometimes I cut out the window frames and sometimes I just leave it as it is. Right, so the materials I'm going to be using to build the stonework for the signal box is the coarse stone 4 from Will Scenics kits. And um, it's quite tough to cut. Um, the straight cuts are quite easy. And as you can see, I've already pre mitered this just by scraping the back. And that pre is it, and then hopefully the two corners should marry up. And when the glue is dry, I shall just um, sand the corners and blend the stones in um, to get them to look right. So, yeah, so I've done the front wall, I've done the back, and um, we'll see how we progress from here. Right, so what I'm going to do first, I'm going to work on the front wall, because I need to cut a slot in the base and also cut out for this window. Um, as you can see I've pre-drilled um, some holes um, just two millimeters in from the window frame. So once that's cut out all I'm going to do is just glue that straight onto there after I've um, peeled back some of the stones because uh, the stonework is quite uneven so we need to level it out a little bit in order to glue the window on. Um, yeah, the idea behind drilling these holes is to stop the blade from cutting further than where I need to cut. So, the, so as I'm cutting away it's going into the hole rather than slipping back and causing unnecessary scratches in the stonework. And then we'll just do the same here. And we'll just keep doing this until eventually it weakens the plastic and we'll just push it out. Right, so as you can see I've cut the window and the, the slot out on the base. The slot there is for any point rodding to come through to operate the points. Um, that's why I've, I've got a little bit of a, a slot there. Um, yes, yeah, so what I'm doing now is I've cleaned up the, the hole and now I'm just scraping back some of this stonework because it is, as I said before, it's quite uneven and um, it just makes the window look like it's stuck on, but if I can get it a little bit flatter just around the edges there like so, try and get that as flat as possible 
uh, before I can glue that on. So let's uh, see what how this comes about. Because I did mark it with a pencil, you can just about make out the pencil line there. So I just if I just flatten all them stones. And hopefully it won't look like the window has been just stuck on. Right, so I've glued the window frame on and uh, it looks a lot better since I've um, scraped away the plastic and it looks a little bit flatter. If you just look on the edge there, it looks like it's moulded into the stonework as it should be. And as you can see along this edge, I've scraped that away in order to place this lintel in. Bear in mind it will all be painted. And this is just um, one half mil quarter round and one mil half round. And that looks quite effective as it is. So I'm just doing the last bit now for this lower door. Feel I'm just coming to the edge, and that should just pop out. Don't want to break. Don't want to break this edge if I can help it. So I just back and forth, just help it on its way. Right, so that's that bit out, and hopefully that door should just fit in there. See what I mean? I've got to do a little bit of fettling at the top there, cut a little bit more out of the top, and then that'll fit in there nicely. When you're cutting those little pieces out, always start from the corner and work to the centre, and then turn it round and then do the same. And that way you get a nice sharp corner. Hopefully yeah, that'll do. Before I glue the door in, I thought I'd show you that I've stuck a little bit of um, plastic card on the back of the door to create a lip, like a glue lip, so when that drops in there, it stays flush with the back and it gives a, a neat look to the front as you can see. So I should just glue that in there now. Before I glue the door in, I just thought I'd show you that I have added a footstep here. Um, so instead of cutting 8mm between there, I cut 6 and then put this little piece of um, um, stonework in to create a footstep. So that's now ready to glue together. I've also pre-mated the side so I don't put any stress on these two doors um, before I glue the main body together or the main building together as it were. As you can see I've, I've pre-mated them so hopefully uh, the mitres, mitres will um, glue together. I've already pre-tried this side. Um, and it don't look too bad. I think a little bit of glue will help fill the corners. Uh, but we just have to see how it uh, comes together. Right, so before we glue the walls together, I've got to create a floor. So I'm using this 2mm um, thick plastic card and I'm just scribing it just like I would do with a pen. Um, just to create some floorboards. This is going to be the backbone of the building. This is what's going to keep the four sides of the uh, walls together. Um, because I've checked this for squareness and it's pretty good. So hopefully the walls will stay nice and square and we'll have a square building. Um, the other thing I've done is I've marked the floor height and with the old bits of um, flashing that we use off our kits I'm just going to glue that under there 
on the line and then that will then support the floor like so. Right, so I've put the first two walls together, the back and the right hand side wall and as you can see I've got a perfectly good corner there that just needs um, scraping back and sanding and blending in um, from one side to the other. So yeah, that's not too bad, it's better than what I expected. I thought I'd show you what uh, it looks like in position so far. Um, as you can see, it's not a huge signal box. It's about one and a half times the size of the water tower next door. And you can see why I wanted to keep it in the traditional stone. So it looks like it was built uh, at the same time with the same type of windows at the front and uh, they were the same or similar stonework and um, that's where it's going to be sited there's just enough room to allow for the chimney so there's, there's about uh, 15 millimeters there so there's plenty of room for the chimney press to come up through that gap and uh, yeah so far so good and uh, it's a great spot for seeing the trains coming and going right on that corner so yeah perfect place for it I think right so here we are we're back at the bench and what I'm doing now is I'm just taking off these really sharp corners um, just by trying to blend the stones in if it's possible and um, now I'll just give them a little bit of a sanding just to try and blend them edges in even where the, the crevices there where the stones meet try and just cut them out and create it to go around the corner if it's possible so you can see the corners are really too sharp and they're not um, mixing very well from one stone to the other side if you know what I mean so if I just try and blend them in a little bit if it's possible you might not tell that much when it's painted but uh, it just just does not look right with sharp corners okay I have now finished blending the corners in uh, rounding them off, getting rid of the sharp edges. You can see a joint line there, um, but um, the paint might seep into that and hide that. Some corners are better than others, like this one for instance, where the blocks seem to have married in quite well, and there as well. Right, so the next thing I want to do is start looking at the windows. Um, what I want to do is create a window sill all the way around these edges before I um, start working out the sizes for the actual windows themselves. So I'm just going to mate these. So I'll start off with one corner. So this is going to go smack in the middle of the um, plastic stone sheet. Now this is 3mm wide by 0.5mm thick. So that should cover up the, the, the stone there and give the window sill its base. So we shall um, cut these at 45 degrees. If I cut two identically the same
use this one as a template um, because I've come the same distance in on this side as I have this side where the where the door is which is roughly 26 mil to, from that corner to the back and uh, I'll just put that on there and then cut that to size and glue these two pieces in. I'll just give that a try run. I may have to cut that back a little bit, take a couple of them off the back. While I'm waiting for the glue to set on the stone wall there for the windowsill, I might as well make a start on the chimney breast. Um, the one on the back of this drawing here. So it's 6mm wide there, but it opens up to 8mm there. So this chimney breast is going to have like a, a lip over this edge of the wall here. But what I'll do is I'll cut away a little section there to allow the cables to run down the back of the chimney so I can put an LED into the signal box. So what I've found with this stuff it is quite tough to cut but if you score it a few times and then um, it just snaps. So I'm cutting a strip of 15mm, which is the base of the chimney, and it narrows up to 10mm from front to back. So a couple of scores, and then it should just snap. Easy peasy. Right, so the next part of making this uh, chimney is to narrow the top section of the chimney. So what I've done is I've come up 35 and then I've come up 45. So we've got a nice 10mm slope. So what I'll do is I'll cut it from that point to that point and then we have our 10mm width for the top half of the chimney. So as I've marked it on the back of the stone, I shall cut it from the back of the stone. But just doing some gradual cuts, and eventually it'll just peel away. You can see it there, it's just peeling away. And then we'll just turn it at a slight angle and do the same, but being careful not to cut into the chimney breast itself. There you go, so that's just peeled away nicely there. Cutting right into that corner. There she goes. So as you can see, it just kind of slopes in a little bit. So I do the same to the other side and then that will then go on the back like so. Obviously I've got to extend um, the height of the chimney. That's the trouble with these sheets. You never get them tall enough for bigger buildings hence why most of my buildings are made in card so we should carry on with this half and we should end up with a shape like this so what I've got to do now <laughs> it's not finished there I've got to chamfer these corners so I've got to chamfer them back to a 45 degree angle so I can create the corners like we have here on the signal box take that back right to the edge and then with another mitre we'll just be able to put them up and we should get a decent joint like we have there. I have now finally made the chimney breast up. Um, it took a lot of scraping to do the mitres as you can see there. It's so I can get a 
sharper finish on the edges and then all I've got to do is just blend them edges in like we did with the main walls um, as for the curves in the wall I just bent it one way then bent it back the other way uh, as you can see inside there where you can see the stresses of the bending one way and then bending the other way and where it wouldn't bend where there was big blocks I just cut through the big blocks uh, it's more on this side you can see it where there I've cut through the big blocks just to help it bend it around to meet the shape um, once this is dried I'll be able to shape it better and obviously recreate these curves uh, a bit better so we'll just leave that to to dry before I glue it onto the back of the signal box now the back of the signal box as you can see I've scraped away the stones using a Dremel and a sanding disc just to get them nice and flat so when I do come to stick the chimney breast on we get a nice butt up against the wall there without any gaps um, still a bit more tidying up to do but once that's finally glued in place you'll not be able to see um, any of the large gaps that, that were in there before um, if I move that chimney abreast along there you can see there's lots and lots of gaps but by sanding those away um, it gets a lot better a lot neater finish right so we'll leave this to dry because it's not quite set yet and uh, that would be ideal for gluing onto there. So this is all I was doing. See there's a bit more there, I've just got to take that off. Moving on a little bit, um, I have now glued the chimney breast to the signal box. Um, after rounding over the corners there just to look if all the stone has been dressed and try to blend the edges in together um, yeah I've capped off the chimney breast using some 1.5 plastic card and two pieces of 0.5 um, plastic card top and bottom but before I stuck top and bottom together I rounded over the corners so it looks like it's been dressed as you can see there you can see the 0.5 on the top and there's a little bit on the bottom as well so that's the chimney breast now glued to the signal box so the next thing I'm working on is the windows I'm using 1mm styrene strip plus 1.5mm um, which will then butt up against the door frame here like so and I'll be using 1.5 on the corners so I'll just use this other side set of windows as, a, as an example so when I finally get around to doing the big panel you have the wider styrene strip on the corners to give it that uh, look if all the windows are set back from the main frame so yes I measured the distance from the edge of the door to the center of this mitre here and uh, minus the three mil for the um, supports of the window frame section and then divided the rest into the window panels and uh, so there we have the two side window panels they're not finished yet because I've got to add some um, center pieces in there to break them up into smaller windows so that's where we are um, these pieces here for the, the big window that goes along the, the front and it's critical that we get these measurements absolutely spot on in length and that way they'll come together nicely when we glue them in uh, after we made the front pane up or the front window up so yeah so that's where we are 
Making these frames up is uh, very straightforward. Um, you cut your pieces and you just put a little bit of this contact adhesive on either ends and then you just drop it in place. Um, these centers are 9 millimeters, and it's just a case of just dropping them in there and then just moving it around so that the glue, if there's any access, doesn't stick to the cutting mat. And there you go. So that's the, the front frame. Um, almost done. I've just got to do the the cross members going across this way. And then we'll be able to put these window frames together. So it's the front and the two sides almost completed. So that was the easy part. Now we've got the smaller pieces to go in. So we'll uh, see how we get on. Right, so the windows are glued in. So all I'm doing now is just drilling some holes ready for the um, handrail. Um, sometimes you have the handrail on what you call like a walkway, which goes round the um, signal box. But on some photographs that I've seen, they have the handrail actually fitted to the framework of their windows. Um, let me show you. Um, so yeah. That's the windows fitted and uh, with the holes pre-drilled. So I'm putting a handrail there and a handrail there. I'm not going to bother putting one across there because the the foot, the um, the running boards, if you like, are on these two sides only. So uh, yeah, so we're getting there. Window frames are done. Now this is what I mean about the handrail being on the front of the signal box and that's what I'm going to uh, copy. Now this signal box is at the, the old Pelton station on the line between uh, Tyne Dock and Concert. As you can see it's a full wooden um, signal box. So I'm just copying this idea here where you've got the handrail running along the window and I'm going to put this running board in roughly about the same um, depth. You notice it's not on the side where you come up into the signal box. So I just thought I'd... Right, to finish off this video I thought I'd place the signal box in its um, position as it were on the layout and um, yeah it, we've come a long way this week um, we started with a little drawing and now we've ended up something looking like a signal box it's uh, a little bit unique but um, you can see why I've done it like this it's so uh, the two buildings being next door to each other um, look similar so if I can get the stonework to match that colour I think that would be uh, pretty good I think if pretty good if, if we get it to, to look the same so there's still a lot more to do there's all the um, interior there's the handrail and uh, and the, the steps on the side of the signal box there so there's still plenty left to do and that will be in the next video right now then before we go a little Thank you to everybody who commented on the last video regarding the G5. Um, yes, uh, it can quite safely now pull up three coaches up Stevenson's Bank and um, Social Station can just about hold four suburban coaches anyway. So, um, so I'm quite happy the way that that's... Um, can manage the three coaches. Uh, lots of tips and ideas about adding extra weight um, which I'm going to take on board because I've ordered some um, liquid lead which is um, little round, little tiny little ball bearings which I may be able to put into the um, saddles, uh, the water tanks, uh, the saddle water tanks on the locomotive so I may be able to fit a few more in there and give it a little bit of extra weight to add the traction. 
Um, obviously, if it wants to pull four coaches up, I might put another smaller engine on the back just to give it a helping hand. So that'll be interesting to see. Maybe that could be another video. But I think that's all from me. Um, thanks again for watching, and I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen. And maybe you'll come back and join us again. Bye for now. Bye.